John, the stock's up almost 7% today, um, but it is still about $50 less than your price target. What's your outlook now that we've gotten these results? Well, Julia, thanks for, thanks for having me. I, I think you got, went through the laundry list of, of risks and problems that went through uh, you know, the quarter, being volume under pressure, raw mats inflating, you know, issues with Shanghai being shut down. Yet the company still put up pretty good margins, 14.6% op margins, positive free cash flow, 621 million free cash flow. Um, so in the midst of, of all of this sort of death and damnation uh, that the company was facing and the industry is facing, they put up pretty decent uh, you know, numbers. And I think one of the big things that we learned um, you know, is his how fast uh, they intend to increase the capacity. Basically, in the first quarter, they were highlighting about 1.05 million of capacity uh, with Shanghai ramping up, Fremont expanding a little bit, and Austin and Berlin coming on sometime uh, late this year. Uh, they're talking about 1.9 million units of capacity. So that gives you an indication that they may be able to um, theoretically hit these 50 percent volume growth numbers uh, this year and, and next year. I mean, obviously, you need the capacity to drive the growth in this industry. Um, but, you know, all things considered, not yeah, too ask, bad a quarter. I want to ask you about that 50 percent annual growth um, in vehicle deliveries that they reaffirmed. It seems like that, that target is going to be tough. I mean, you said you think it'll be possible, but all of their, their forecasts are predicated uh, on that playing out. Um, are you concerned that they might not be able to hit those targets? Well, we are um, undercutting those. We're up about a little bit less than 40 percent uh, this year because they have a lot of catch up to do in the second half of the year, given what went on in the second quarter. Uh, and we're only up uh, between a little over 20 percent for next year. So, yes, we are skeptical that they can actually hit those. Um, there's two reasons. One, that capacity ramp is not going um, as well in Austin, Berlin, um, as, as expected. And two, competition is coming in. I mean, we forecast all the product that's coming out in the next four years in a study we do called Car Wars, and there's 110 EV dedicated nameplates coming to the U.S. market in the next four years. So we actually think that from a competitive standpoint, uh, for the first time ever, Elon is going to be, Elon and Tesla are going to be facing some real competition in the market for some pretty damn good product. John, how much China exposure are you factoring in? How much are you watching the state of the economy there and Tesla production there? Well, it, it's huge. I mean, basically, um, of the 1.9 million in capacity, 750,000 will be over there. Now, some of that is for export, uh, but it's a very, very uh, important uh, market for, for Tesla and all EV manufacturers. Uh, given you know, you're in a similar environment where demand is outstripping supply, um, pressures on the economy there and even here in the U.S. are not necessarily top of mind for a company like this, particularly when you look at the pricing power that they have at the moment. Uh, but over time, if there was a, an extreme deterioration or collapse uh, in that economy, it could be a big deal for them. But for now, um, it seems like they can ride out that storm uh, in, in China and even in the U.S., to be perfectly honest, as well.